Hi, my name is Val and I work at Red Oaks Nature Center here in Madison Heights, Michigan. And I'm sure you visited our nature center, which is now open as of the 15th. Today's virtual program is called Supernatural Shapeshifters. Well, what ships their shape? Say that fast three times. What we're talking about, of course, are caterpillars. In this case, we're talking about black swallowtail caterpillars. I've got the scientific name up there. To simplify it, the first part, the genus name, is the Latin word for butterfly. And the species name, polyxenes, if I'm saying that correctly, is from the daughter of the king of Troy during the Trojan War. Kind of interesting, but I'm wondering why. And I couldn't find that out. So maybe you can do that. What we're looking at here are the adult swallowtails. As you can see, one slide is a male. The next one next to it is a female. Now they're called dimorphic because they have different coloration, male versus female. If you look carefully, look at the double row of yellow spots. On a male, it's quite distinct. On a female, not so much. Also look at the amount of blue. The blue is, you, there's a lot more blue on the female than the male. Also, there are what we call eye spots. See the orange circles and they have the black center. That's the eye spot. Now, if you see these in your garden, these butterflies feed on nectar, not on pollen like many people think. What they do do with pollen is they transfer pollen from flower to flower. So they are considered pollinators. Nectar is found in flowers. If you have flowers that have small tubes on them or are actually kind of flattish with lots of little tiny flowers to make up the whole one, like Queen Anne's lace, those are the kind of flowers that they find um, they like the most. Here we have a black swallowtail butterfly. Now, if you look at it carefully, you can see that the lines of yellow are not as distinct as a male. Also, there are more blue on the wings. Both males and females do have those eye spots. And that's one way to tell black swallowtail from other species that are similar. Now, black swallowtails protect themselves and they do something that is called mimicry, where something looks a lot like something else. Now, what it looks like is the pipe vine swallowtail, and that's on your left. The pipe vine, pipe vine swallowtail is one that does not taste good at all. On the right, the black swallowtail does. Now look at the two bottom pictures. On the top, they look quite different. The mimicry portion comes to when they close their wings. And you can see that they're not identical, but for an animal, they're not going to really observe them like we are today. They're just looking for food. The mimicry involves this butterfly right here. This is a pipe vine swallowtail. And you can see when its wings are open that it does not look at all like a black swallowtail. This guy tastes terrible. So this is the important part right here. You can see all of the orange that's there. And also you can really see their antenna right here. The antennas are, looks like they're on, a, looks like a club on the end of a stalk. And that's very typical of a butterfly. <clears throat> now, just for fun, this is another swallowtail. And of course you can tell it's a swallowtail because it has, guess what, tails. This one is called a zebra swallowtail. Another example of mimicry is that these black swallowtail caterpillars, you can see the one labeled there, 
looks very similar to the monarch and the queen butterflies. Those eat milkweed, which makes them, uh, it's a heart toxin that is in the milkweed sap and it gets into the system of the caterpillar and that causes some discomfort when an animal eats it. So it learns its lesson the first time around. Another way it protects itself besides mimicry is called the osmentaria. And if you look at those orange tubercle type things, they are actually considered an organ, which to me is kind of weird. I think of a pancreas as an organ, but it's an organ. And what it does, it's tucked into the head. And when it feels threatened, it extends those tubes and that tube produces a, a fluid that it tries to wipe on whatever is threatening it. And they tell me that it smells like bad cheese. So I don't know about you, but I don't think I would want to go around and smell like bad cheese. Males need to have energy when it comes to the mating season. So they do something that's called puddling, where they go to a, guess what, a puddle, and they get nutrients from that puddle, and that makes them more robust or healthier when it comes to the females. Now, their life cycle begins as an egg. That's the first stage in metamorphosis, which insects go through. This is a picture of a female laying an egg. Now they will lay their eggs sing singly, not in a cluster like many other butterflies will do. Here is an example of an egg. And if you wanted to find an egg, you can look on rue, dill, parsley, and fennel. Those are, it'll eat other plants as well but those are the ones that are its um, most favorite. And you can see how tiny that egg is. And that's one reason why they lay singly because of the way that leaf is formed. Now, out of that egg hatches, of course, a caterpillar. This is the first stage or the first instar that a caterpillar goes through. An instar means when a caterpillar molds or sheds its skin, that's considered the next instar. A swallowtail goes through five. And in this case, the, there are different markings for different instars. And we know by the marking here that this is a first instar. It's got that white saddle. And what they're saying about the white saddle Technically, it says uh, it's an area where urea collects from the leaves of the plants that it eats. So basically, it helps it to survive. Now, a swallowtail caterpillar will be in the caterpillar stage for about three to four weeks. Here, it is on a parsley plant. The eggs are, of course, laid on the plants that the caterpillars will later eat. As you noticed from this one, it's black with a white saddle. And here we have the greenish coloration that we saw earlier, the one that looks a lot like the monarch caterpillar. And I put this picture up of a person's finger. Now look way at the tip and you can see how small they are. And the egg is even smaller than that and how much they've um, grown in size. This is what molting is. You can see by the one picture that it's kind of got crinkly skin. That is the dead skin. And what it does is it wiggles its way out of that skin. You can see on the next per, uh, picture that it has wiggled out. And what they will do is they will turn around and eat that skin. I know it sounds gross, but it's energy and nobody's going to waste energy. Now this one is molting. When it goes into a, or forms a chrysalis, that's also called the last instar. We have two colored chrysalises 
And those are still both from the black swallowtail. During the summertime, black, the first, there are two generations of swallowtails. The first generation, they have either green or brown chrysalises. The next generation, which is the one that overwinters, they have brown camouflage. If you're gonna sit there during the cold winter, you wanna make sure that no one can see you because they will eat chrysalis if they find them. And you can see the little silk belt that is around that chrysalis. Also where that chrysalis is attached to the branch is uh, what's called a cremaster, which works a lot like Velcro. And it's very firmly attached. If you think about the weather and the wind and all things that can happen to a chrysalis, it's really a great adaptation so that it stays secure. A chrysalis will remain so for about 10 to 20 days. I know that's a broad space of time. A lot of it has to do with how large the caterpillar was when it first went into a formed a chrysalis and also the temperature. As you know, Chris, excuse me, insects are what we call cold blooded. They don't produce their own heat, so they rely on the sun. And if there's not a lot of sun, their body systems aren't going to be working that quickly. This is a chrysalis that's about to open. You can see that it's now clear and you can see the wings that are visible through the chrysalis. Fascinating. There is the final chrysalis where you can see it is slit open and then the butterfly climbs out. Here I have a couple of things. The first one, we're gonna go, we're gonna go left to right and then top to bottom. That is, you can see the caterpillar is making that silk belt and it's attached already with that cremaster to the branch. And you can see also that that skin has split and what's underneath that skin now is the skin of the chrysalis. The next picture is the black swallowtail is now emerging and that's called eclosing. So that's a word I'll use from now on. They're eclosing from that chrysalis. They will climb out and then you can see the next one, how it's split so that they can cl climb out. The next one, bottom left, their wings are not as large as they normally are. Why? Well, that abdomen, it, if when you're in the chrysalis, you can't have open wings, it's just not gonna work. So they have their wings tightly tucked against their body. When they eclose out of that chrysalis, they have fluid in their abdomen and they squeeze that abdomen and that fluid is pumped through veins into the wings. And eventually they will pump to full size. You can see the one on the bottom right that that's still not even uh, fully uh, expanded. And it will continue to do that until they are expanded. The eggs, excuse me, the... Um, the butterfly, so sorry, I'm fumbling here. The butterfly will then hang so that its wings are hanging down straight and its wings will now harden. This can be a very sensitive time for a butterfly. So if you have, when yours is closing, try, try, try not to touch it. It will stay now, female or male? If you said female, you're right. Look at those eye spots. Not a whole lot of blue there, but more so than the male. And the double line of yellow spots isn't very vivid or distinct. They will stay as a butterfly for six to 14 days. And like I mentioned with the averages, that, that has to do also with their food supply. If they're not going to have a large food supply, then they're not going to live that long. 
Here you can see the real thing. Here we have a black swallowtail caterpillar in, oh, that might be the second instar. The reason I'm guessing is there is an exact measurement between the first and second instar, but they do look the same. Let me move this here. Our other guy is new and very much. Now he is, of course, probably, or she is looking for food. There you can see its saddle. Let's see how close I love this. Probably about as close as I can get. Oh, sorry, guys. New technology. Interesting thought. How does it select where it wants to go? Here it's going toward the tip of the, I believe this is dill here. I'm sorry, I'm not a herb fanatic or I should say fanatic special. And uh, they go toward the tips. Now monarchs will do that as well. They'll like to eat at the tips of the plant. Now you can see, it looks like it has a lot of legs on it. As we know, insects have six legs. Its first set of three sets of feet are actually the true legs. The other legs are called prolegs. And those are the legs that do most of the moving because of the way they are built. They're able to hang on to a branch or a leaf much better than the first set. And it, we can see our other little guy isn't doing very much at all. Okay, the one thing I wanted to go back to very quickly that I neglected to mention something about is the osmotarium. That is an awesomely cool thing to see. If you touch the caterpillar, it's more than likely that it's going to, what do you call, release? I'm not even quite sure what the term is. Uh, the osmo, you will see the osmotarium. And so it's a cool thing and you need to decide if that's something that you want to do because it is relatively unsafe for a caterpillar, but I get it. So I'm not recommending it, but I'm a scientist as well as you and this kind of stuff is really cool. Now, if you have any questions or concerns, please make sure that you email me or you can call me here at the Nature Center. Now, as we know, not Every egg hatches in, into a caterpillar and not every caterpillar will develop all the way uh, to a butterfly. If you have some kind of a fatality, let me know. I have some replacements just in case. I'd also love it if you could sell me, send me some pictures. It's always fun to see what's going on with caterpillars. You have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.